and also pastor it's a p word in bolton so please be aware that's this saturday and you know i'm going to be driving down so in terms of transport you can just jump in the car with me and i, I guarantee you we'll have a blessed time together amen other announcements oh <laughs> we have bible study um this wednesday Amen. We've had a bit of a, a break from Bible study, but we're back on this Wednesday. It's going to be a heavy series. Amen. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be exciting, and I'm looking forward to just getting back uh, and fellowshipping and growing together on God's Word. And I pray even after the message today, we're even going to be more excited about the scriptures uh, and our time of Bible study together. So that's on this Wednesday. So please be aware of that. Uh, we are having an impact team to Doncaster. We're supporting our church in Doncaster. They're a young church. And they've asked if we can come help them for a concert they're having. We're going to be helping out, distributing leaflets on the streets. For those that can minister in music, if you sing, if you rap, whatever it is that you can do to help in the concert, that will be appreciated. Or even sharing your testimony. Um, but that's Saturday the 7th of March, so two Saturdays away, and um, there's a list at the back, uh, some names have already been put on there, but if you'd like to attend, your name is not on that list, please, please, please add your name to the list, and it's a wonderful way for us to share our faith, for us to do something for the Kingdom. And then just to remind them, the 15th of March, um, Pastor Brick is going to be ministering for us here uh, at our Huddersfield Church. The night before, the Saturday the 14th, I actually need to add that to our list on that we have our own gospel concert and it's going to be an awesome time together. So those are the announcements. Bible study this Wednesday, the impact team to Doncaster on the 7th, Pastor Brick preaching for us on the 15th, and also a concert on the 14th of March. Amen. We're going to take an offering this morning. I encourage you, let's be faithful as we give of our tithes, of our offerings to uh, If you're giving online, I'll just place that um, on the screen over there. And I'm going to pray this morning, blessing the gift, blessing the giver as we give of our offerings this morning. Amen. Lord, I thank you for bringing all of us together this morning. We bless you, Father, for the opportunity to be in your house this morning. Father, I pray that today, God, you would bless the gift, you would bless the giver. Father, use this gift, God, to propagate your kingdom, that, Father, we can continue to see growth and people added to your kingdom, people coming into a saving relationship with you. Father, this morning, I pray that you would bless the gift, that you would bless the giver in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The offering baskets will get to you courtesy of either Brother Sam or Brother Jackson. Oh, Brother Jackson has got it in there. Thank you. Guys, we'll just uh, take our offering this morning. For those who um, are UK taxpayers, just to make you aware, we recently um, joined Gift Aid, which is where 25 pence of every pound you give is given back to us by the government. So I've got some forms at the back. I'll talk about it more next Sunday. But just to make you aware that you can now give uh, and gift aid can be returned to us as a church on that giving. Amen. So Brother Jackson will do the honors. Thank you, Joe. Amen. So a few Sundays ago, I promised that there was going to be, I called him a mystery speaker. Amen. I don't know if you can guess who that mystery person is <laughs> this morning. But you know, it's a month of evangelism. He said February was a month of evangelism, of reaching out with our faith. And so I wanted to invite along John this morning. John, I'm really sorry, I haven't quite got the pronunciation of your surname. But, <laughs> but John is here with us this morning. John joins us from Gideon's International. How many people have heard of Gideon's this morning? Amen. John joins us from Gideon's. He's here with his lovely wife, Sharon. So please give them a very welcome. You know, just for those who are not aware, the Gideon's is an association of Christian business and professional men and their wives sharing their faith, but also, as you probably know, 
placing Bibles in very strategic locations that people can come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. They started in 1899 when two, <laughs> when two businessmen met in a hotel. Father, were both Christians and had this burden to start something where they could share their faith with other professionals and also reach the world through um, the giving of these wonderful Bibles. I'm going to let John talk a bit more about that. Um, but this morning, please, let's make John feel welcome. He's got a wonderful message. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting us to come and talk to you. It's a great pleasure to be amongst you. Met most of you already. <laughs> Lovely conversation with you all, learning about you and where you're from and what you're doing. And you know, it's great that Sean and I can just walk in amongst you this morning and we feel right at home. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what it's about in Jesus, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That we can, we just identify with one another immediately because we are the Lord's uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's just amazing. So, thank you for inviting us. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what we do as Gideons. From conversations I've already had, I don't think there's much introduction necessary. In fact, John's taking most of what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you, I don't think anybody dare put their hand up to say that they've never encountered a Gideon Bible somewhere. No. Because if you did, we'd throw you out. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, great. And thank you for inviting us, as I've already said. John did say to me, he said, I'd like a bit of a word of testimony from you. A little bit about Gideon's, obviously. And he said, I could preach a bit. So that's what I'm going to try and do all at once. So all in one go this morning. He said I could speak for about three hours, if that's all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. So yeah, who are we? Well, Sharon and I have lived in Huddersfield for a long time. We're, uh, uh, we have been Christians for a very long time. We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, I don't want to dwell on myself. I want to dwell on the one who saved us, who is the Lord Jesus. And suffice to say, we've been believers for a long way back. We've gone through all sorts of ups and downs and trials, but the Lord has kept us throughout everything in our lives. And you know, it's amazing. When you get to be a little bit older as we are, and you look back over your lives, it's amazing how you can see God's hand just in there, just caring, just guiding, just leading. And despite all the difficulties, and we've been through some difficulties, you know that God's hand is in there just bringing you along. When we were young, which was quite a long time ago, mm -hmm. um, we, I went to church, I'd been invited to church by a friend, and I enjoyed going to church, and it was a local church not far away from here. And I enjoyed going because they played football and they played table tennis, and I said, you've got a table tennis table. <laughs> <laughs> well, what other reason was there for going to church? Well, eventually, I got invited to go on a holiday. Now, holidays, when I'm talking 50 years ago, you know, we're not youngsters, we tell you. We're talking 50 <laughs> years ago. We were about to go on a holiday to Carnforth, Cape and Ray Hall in Carnforth, which is over on the uh, west coast there. It's up in the Lake District area, if you know where I'm talking about. And so, off we went, and they played table tennis there as well, but they had some evangelical speakers. It was a Christian conference centre. And at that conference center, we were told, you know, you've got, to, you've got to deal with your lives. You've got to get real about the lives that we have because Jesus came and Jesus died for everyone. And Jesus, when he came, had a purpose and that was to bring salvation to you. It's on offer to you now. You want it, don't you? And ultimately, I came to that point of saying, yes, I want it. So some great evangelical speakers, some lovely evangelical speakers, and the, the ladies that were around weren't bad either, because that's where I met her. <laughs> so she came, I mean, she's from a very strange place. <laughs> she's from a place called Belfast. <laughs> right? Now, you know, 
All I knew about Belfast was there was a lot of trouble over there, so I thought I'd better rescue her and bring it over here. <laughs> so that's pretty much what I did. And so that's where we, we got together. So that's a long time back now. But you know, in those days, I mean, just thinking back then, do you know, at that time, my family had no car. We didn't have a fridge. We'd only just got a telephone. Definitely no central heating. I mean, do we take those things for granted today? But we're not talking so long ago. Not talking so long ago. Apple was something that you got for your lunch if you were lucky. <laughs> yeah. Google, well that had something to do with cricket, didn't it? Anybody play cricket, the Google app? You know what I mean? No, you twist the ball out the back of your hand. <laughs> yeah. Amazon, well that's somewhere in South America, isn't it? <laughs> and Facebook, well Facebook just wasn't, was it? No. No. But you know, I mean today, I was just reading an article yesterday, that was four American giants own 10% of the stock market. Massive. They pretty much run the world. And are we dependent upon them? Oh yeah. We've all got our mobile phones. So things have moved on, haven't they? But you know, in all of this, when I had no fridge, when I had no car, when I had so little, when the family had so little, when I came to know the Lord, I had greater riches than all of the things that we've got today. Very, very. Once you come to realise what the Lord has given you, what's on offer, your life, your, your whole perspective just changes, as I'm sure you can all identify with. I hope so. So yeah, we've had our spiritual ups and downs over the years. But not long ago, well I say not long ago, it doesn't say it's 20 years ago now, but uh, 20 years ago, we were invited to join an organisation called Gideon's. Now I've had a, since the day I was born again, I came to the point where I had a very deep interest in the scriptures. And what better ministry could there be to get into than Gideon's, where the focus of what we do is giving away Bibles. That's pretty much what we're identified with as doing. But you know, that's the focus, giving away Bibles. But our mission is to see men and women and boys and girls born again for the Lord Jesus Christ through giving away Bibles and placing Bibles. And yes, we've got Bibles all over all over the world. I think we went a couple of years ago, we went through our two billionth copy placed somewhere around the world. And Gideon's International today. Uh, distributes something in the order of 93, 94 million copies of the scriptures somewhere every year. In, in, every year. That's a lot of scriptures, isn't it? Top side of 10,500 an hour, every hour, every day, every week in the year. That's a lot of scriptures. And the, the idea is that we get them out there to the folks that need to have them. Folks that don't know Jesus. So here we are in our world. It's getting a much better place, isn't it? You know, as we go back over recent years, less wars, less conflict, less suffering. No, there isn't a single person who's going to agree with me on that. It's getting darker, the darkness is getting deeper lives of people in this country we have freedom in our religious area in other countries as we've been talking to some of you this morning it's much more difficult to live a life that's dedicated to the lord wickedness corruption depravity is getting worse and deeper by the day but who's surprised Who's surprised? There are multitudes in desperate situations around the world. Loads and loads of people, never mind around the world, in houses next door to where we live, have 
difficult lives and difficult problems with finance, with relationships. And in worldly terms, as we look around this world, those who are not apprehensive or perhaps even scared silly have their heads very deep in some very dark sand. This world is very much on a steep incline down to its own destruction. But as Gideon certainly, and I hope you believe in the Bible, this book we consider to be unquestionably the word of God. The Lord has planned all of this that's going on around us. He's planned our ultimate destiny in this world. And he's told us in advance, in this book, what is going to happen. This book is tremendous. And a refuge for every one of us, whatever may happen in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we enjoy a peace in it all, a peace that nobody else, those outside of Jesus, cannot understand, cannot identify with. And our mission is to bring these people to that point where they know the Lord, where they can have the peace that transcends all the grief and the anguish that goes on around us in our world and draws them to Jesus. So what do we do? Well, as Gideons, we, we like to say that we place the scriptures in all their, uh, well, they're all the same shape, they're all rectangular, but in all their sizes and colours, we try to place the scriptures in the highways and byways of life. Places where people have that opportunity to pause, to pick up a copy of the Word of God, and to read it. And we, we commit the book into the hands of our God, that he might draw people to the very words that will change their lives. When I was working, I knew a man who had a favourite saying, and his favourite saying was, enjoy yourself, this life is not a rehearsal. And I used to say, hold on a second, totally contrary. Yes, enjoy yourself by all means, but this life is entirely a rehearsal. Entirely a rehearsal for what is yet to come. What is talked about in the book here. Right now, there's heavenly conflict to go on. There's a conflict in the heavens. How many of you have read Ephesians chapter 6? Does that ring a bell with any of you? Heavenly conflict. We can only glimpse the unseen world that's around us through the lens of Scripture. But in Ephesians chapter 6, we read, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil. Where? In the heavenly realms. If you haven't got that, then just think on it for a moment. All around us there, is, there are, are heavenly situations. We read about them in the scriptures, but particularly here in Ephesians and at other places in the scriptures too. We get that glimpse of what's going on. And very much the, the Lord's intervention in our lives is to display us before the evil ones, to show that we are a separated people. It's there, quite clear, in the scriptures. And so we have to contend with this conflict, but we are protected by the one who loves us. And we are the pawns and the prize in this heavenly conflict. It's an understanding that we need to grasp. And it's a reason why we need to be constant in prayer. It's a reason why we need to be constant in uh, the security of our spiritual lives. There's much sin. There's much suffering in the world. Why does God permit it? Well, again, I have not time to go into that this morning, but there's a deep understanding there in the scriptures of, of what it's all about, what our lives are all about. God is not responsible for all these things. He's tolerating 
all these things. He set us apart in this world and there's a day coming. There's a day coming when he will deal with the wickedness that confronts us on a day by day basis. Satan's rulership over the earth will come to an end. Sinfulness abounds at the moment. It will be wiped away. All our tears will be wiped away. This only continues for a season. And God has his plan of redemption. Jesus will soon return. And I believe very soon. Everything is in place for him to come back. And draw us as his people to himself. In the meantime, we get on with our work with our ministry. John said that we've come from Gideon's International. We've been a part of Gideon's International for very many years. Um, I just have to tell you that we are rebranding ourselves in the United Kingdom. We're actually drawing away from Gideon's International. The rebranding won't affect anything, and I'm certainly not going to go into the details, but you might see it come about in uh, in the future, that we are rebranded as a slightly different organisation. In practical terms, we shall continue just as we are. So here in Huddersfield, what do we do? Just for example, what does our ministry involve? Well, we go down to the university. A lot of you are familiar with the university. You have a fresh fair every year at the university. And we go down there and we put a stall in the university. And uh, just last year at the Freshers Fair, we gave away 1,047 of these to the students who were passing through the Freshers Fair. We don't know where they end up, but we put them into the hands of the students. At the same time, as I've commented to one or two of you this morning, there are 2,000 Chinese students at the university. 2,000. We have here a Chinese New Testament. I'm told it's in simplified type Chinese. So there's obviously a complicated and a simplified Chinese. <laughs> well, I tell you, I don't know how simplified it is. It ain't simple to me. <laughs> but to someone who's Chinese, and I did ask at the university, I said, what does that say on the front? You might just be able to about see it. I said, what, what does that say? And they said, it says new agreement. Of course, we call it the New Testament, but that's what it is. Testament, agreement, new agreement. So there you go, that's the only Chinese I read. <laughs> anyway, there we go. But yeah, but we gave away. Yeah. Did we give away? 61 Chinese students took those. Why they took those? They took one of those as well, so that they can compare the translations. So they can learn English, and they can do the Chinese. And guess what they're doing? They're reading the scriptures whilst they're learning English. From the Chinese, yeah? Great. We don't mind. If the Lord draws them to himself, that's the name of our game. We place the scriptures in hotels. We do that. We don't have a lot in other school, but we try to do that. We've even got branded testaments. We put badges on the front of them. We can have them printed with Huddersfield Giants on the front. We can have them printed with Huddersfield Towns logo on the front. And the chaplains to Huddersfield Town and Huddersfield Giants, Christian men that I know very well, love these. They give them to the fans, they deal with bereavements, they go and see them, and they, get, they get into homes, they get into people's hands. And who knows what the Lord will do with his word in somebody's hand. So we're into all that sort of thing. Um, what else have we got? We're into the schools, of course. Now, schools. Sharon and I have that job on behalf of the Huddersfield branch of Gideons. And we go into the schools. And we speak to the 11 year olds. Now, I tell you, going into a school at 8 o'clock in the morning and speaking to 211 year olds before you've had your breakfast is not an amusing thing to do. <laughs> But one tries, and we, we go around the high schools when we're permitted to go. A lot of them don't allow us to go in, but we do go into the schools, and we give each one of the children, or we offer to each one of the children, one of these. And you know, these 
scriptures crop up all over the place. It isn't just the kids that read them, it's the adults as well. And we have testimonies, we get testimonies from uh, guys and gals around the, uh, the country who kept these and read them later in their lives and the Lord has brought them to know him through these little red testaments. Sometimes they sit in school bags, they sit in wardrobes, they sit all over the place. The, the dust gets wiped off them, they get open and they get red. And men and women come to know the Lord. And sometimes boys and girls, Sharon and I met a girl when we were talking to uh, a group uh, at a church a little while ago, uh, now a, a, a fine young lady, and she came to us and said, you know, when I was giving back, I took it home, and at night I used to put the bed covers over my head, and I had a little torch, and I used to read it under the bed covers at night. And she's now a fine Christian in a church not far from here. You see, that's what the Lord can do with his word. We have a couple of scripture verses that we regard as being pivotal, pivotal to our ministry. As it happens, they're both chapter 3, verse 16. Now the first one is what we're told is the best known verse in the Bible. How many of you know John chapter 3, verse 16? Can you say it? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Mine's a bit of a mix of the AV and the NIV and the goodness knows what V. But you know, over the years these translations alter the wording slightly. But the meaning is quite clear, isn't it? That it's all about Jesus and it's all about the sons of men. If we believe in Jesus Christ, and it's all in that word believe. It doesn't just mean believe. The fallen angels believe. Satan believes. But they're not saved, are they? It's more than that. It's, accept it's an understanding that we gain through the scriptures of who we are. And ultimately that understanding brings us to our knees before the cross of Jesus in repentance for who we are. And at that point, as John says in that same chapter 3, we are born again, as he was speaking to Nicodemus. And that changes our lives. We're born spiritually. We've been born physically. We're then born spiritually. And a whole new dimension to our lives opens to us. So that's John chapter 3, verse 16. But there's another chapter 3, verse 16, perhaps less well known. And that's Timothy 3, 16. Anybody? Huh? No, well, there you go. You're going to have to read this one. And that says that all Scripture is given by inspiration from God. Now, a little bit of interpretation needed there. First of all, that word all. It doesn't say some Scripture. It says all of it. And I believe every last word of the, the Bible is inspired. We say that the scriptures are inspired and therefore infallible and narrowed. What do we mean by inspired? Well, the Bible was written by over 40 different writers over a period in excess of 1700 years. But you know, it, it has just one author. The author is God himself. And he's given attention to every word that's in that book. But if you put that that is his word, his book with his authorship on it, if you put that down alongside John 3.16, you have a compelling reason for putting that book into the hands of men and women. Bottom line is it doesn't need people like me to speak. It doesn't need people like you to say it. Because God, by the Holy Spirit, interprets those scriptures to the hearts of the recipients of that book. So we're a numbers game, if you like. Get the scriptures out there. Go to prayer. He got older, didn't he? 
and he got a mind of his own and he decided he didn't want to go to church anymore so what did he do well he joined the armed forces and he became a royal marine commander yeah have you seen Arnold Schwarzenegger on the television commando you know one of those and it seems that they do get up to some of these strange things that you see in the films his particular ability he was a diver and he used to strap the tanks on the back and go down you know under the sea and he said on Wick's rock he went out as many spiders as he could find and then he noticed something he noticed that there was a book, something like this, stuffed behind the pipes in the corner. Yeah. So he went and he pulled the book out from behind the pipes, and the pipes started rattling. Are you ahead of me? This was a Gideon Bible that had been stuck behind the pipes to stop the pipes rattling. Yeah? And of course, he had nothing else to do. He sat down and he started reading it. And if he is still doing this morning what he was doing when Sean and I met him, he would be preaching in a church in York. Yeah? Left the forces, became a preacher. You see, God has ways of bringing people to know himself. Now, not all our stories are as interesting as that one. Not everybody comes to the Lord by being stuck in a decompression chamber when they can't get out and being confronted with the scriptures. But Paul did. And you know, ever since Sean and I heard this, we've been running around Riversfield trying to find decompression chambers so that we can stuff Bibles behind the pipes. It's amazing, you know, that God works in these ways. Heard from our regional director not long ago. Gideon's been into a school giving these little testaments to the children. One of the children afterwards decided that he didn't want it, he or she, I presume it was a he, because they put throw on them, because when they went outside into the uh, school grounds, they decided they wanted to throw it upon the school roof. What wasn't known was that there was a guy up on the roof fixing it. Yeah? So he picked it up, put it in his work bag, took it out, started reading it. All I know is in the intervening period be between him starting reading it, and I can tell you the end of the story, that he, his wife, and his three children are all now believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amazing what the Lord can do. Now those are just two stories that are of course very interesting for me to bring to you here this morning and tell you stories like that. But most of the time it's, oh, I got one of these, I opened it, read it, and the Lord saved me. None of that surrounding stuff. But you know, that's what the Lord does. This is a power-packed book. Power-packed. And hence the reason why we work as we do. We have no idea which scripture God is going to use. But we believe, we believe that there will be a harvest of souls that we will be able to speak to and identify with when we find ourselves eventually up there in the heavens. Amen. Yeah. So why do we come and talk to you? Well, we enjoy coming and meeting people in other churches. We want to come and encourage you, amongst other things, that the Lord is working, that the Lord is carrying out his purposes on the face of this earth. And he will bring to pass exactly what he has purposed in exactly the way he has purposed it. 66 books in that Bible, penned by 40 different writers in a very period of 1700 years. And yet it's an integrated message from God, 
tank the engineer in every detail. I believe that in its original languages, every number, every letter, every detail is in its place by supernatural design. And it's God's inspired and therefore infallible and inerrant word. Why would I not want to get that into the hands of men and women? Jesus will soon return. It'll be glorious for us. It'll be horrific for those that don't know him. Sin has entered our world and is regretfully part of our inheritance from Adam. We're all sinners in his sight. We need to acknowledge and repent. The cross is God's remedy for sin. You remember in that garden in Gethsemane before Jesus went to his death, he, he was in agony in his mind for his father and he said, Father, if there's another way, if this cup can be removed from me, then please, let's use the other way. The answer, there was no other way. The cross is God's remedy for our sin. The excruciating, degrading, humiliating death of God himself, of his son, paying the penalty for your sins and for mine. Sin is catastrophically real. But God's holiness, in contrast, is just as real. Heaven and frighteningly hell are also a reality. And the severity of God's remedy for sin, that he himself had to die, should convict us of the seriousness of the problem. It's a serious issue. The Bible makes it very clear that if one should journey unprepared from this life into the next, it's the most dangerous journey that anyone can ever encounter. It's a blessing to have known the Lord for so many years. I pray that every single one of you will hold to the faith that you've got in the Lord Jesus. I tell you, there's nothing greater on the face of this earth than to know him. It's been great to talk to you. As I say, thank you very much for inviting us. Sharon has set up a table at the back which has loads of our literature on it for some of you to take away. I can't believe that anybody hasn't got a Bible, but if you haven't, guess what? We're here to give you a Bible if you want one. Yeah. Come and talk to us afterwards. Thank you, John. I'm done. We really appreciate John and Sharon. Thank you so much. Please give them another round of applause. I'm so blessed by John's ministry. And just a, re a reminder of the power of God's word. Please let's not take this for granted. You know, even in our Bible study sessions, in our personal times of devotion, you know, sometimes you can take certain scriptures for granted, or even God's word, and just take it as a given. But I think just a renewed appreciation for God's word, that literally all of our lives can be led and directed to where God wants us to be. Remember that this year is a year of purpose. And as we draw closer to God's word, that purpose can be realized in our lives. So if nothing else, please remember that there's power in this word and there's power as we go out and we testify to people about God's word and also as people are given the opportunity to have God's word placed in their hands as the Gideons do, amen. We're going to bow our heads as we uh, pray, as we close in an altar call this morning. Just a response really uh, to the message that has been 
ministered, amen, this morning. And just a call this morning, we always do this and give anyone an opportunity that's here that may not be a Christian, does not have a relationship with Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If that is you, this morning, you've heard John's powerful words, that we've all sinned, we've all fallen below God's standard.